Hey, what are you doing? Oh, hey. I'm checking out some time travel art at Popzilla's latest art show. You know, I was thinking about doing some kind of shameless plug for Popzilla, like, follow my friends at Popzilla on Facebook and Instagram. You know, something like that. No, what are you doing here? The UPS guy just dropped off your Marty McFly figure. My Marty McFly figure? I'm late for my review! Oh god, I don't like this. This feels very unsafe. Just go to the review. Ooh. Okay, so, here it is. The Sideshow exclusive version of the Marty McFly figure that comes with his guitar. I like this packaging a lot. It's fairly simple, but I respect its simplicity. I like the clockwork on the back of this package, and I really like the artwork on the front. Not just the DeLorean and the fire trails, but I like that the blue border of Back to the Future and the words of Marty McFly have a little glossy texture over them. Right off the bat, I could tell you that articulation on this figure is really strong. Like, it's got solid, like, shoulder joints and uh, elbow joints. And I'm impressed that, you know, underneath, like, a shirt and a shirt and a jacket and a vest, that it's got good range of motion in the uh, shoulder areas. Uh, legs are good. Even under, like, the jeans, you got good range of motion with, like, knees and at the waist. And it got, it's got good ankle joints, so I always appreciate that. Um, so the fact that there's no real beefs with the articulation allows me just to focus on, like, how well done, like, the tailoring is on this figure. First of all, like his jean jacket in the film had like a lighter uh, section of, of color and then like a darker swatch. So like they, they captured the colors of his jacket really well. Uh, and also the tailoring of it, of the way that little dark sections on the shoulders come down, the way his uh, sleeves roll up. And the fact they included those little tiny buttons. And they look just awesome. And they, you know, of course, they're screen accurate, so I think they did a great job with that. Um, also, the pattern on his shirt is great. I think they did a great job capturing that. And the fact that you can see, like, the little burgundy t-shirt underneath with, like, the little t-shirt um, stitching for the collar. Really, really great work. Also, the buttons on this look really good. Um, his jeans look great. I, in fact, I like the fact that they uh, have, like, that distressed part in the crotch area, you know, which, you know, when you sit in jeans, that happens. Uh, the tailoring of the jeans is great. The color of them is great. The pockets look good. And then, here's my one issue. When you get to his shoes, these aren't his shoes in the movie. Like, he wears Nike shoes. And I'm, you know, not an expert, but I'm guessing they couldn't get the rights from Nike to reproduce shoes. But there should be a swoosh there. Despite the missing swoosh, the rest of the shoe looks really good. Like, the rest of it is accurate to how, like, that shoe in the 80s looked. Including a little red section in the back and the way the edges of the shoe flatten out. But what really impresses me about this figure is this phenomenal, phenomenal head sculpt. I mean, the likeness of Michael J. Fox here, to me, is just insanely well done. Uh, also, I just like the glassiness of his eyes. Um give it like a really real look to it, like there's a certain wetness to it, but that little crinkle in his forehead, you know, that little openness in his mouth, I mean, it's expressive. It really does kind of capture like some of his shocked uh, and awe faces, but it's not so extreme either. Like it's, it's a, somewhere of a mix between like a natural head pose and a reaction head pose. And I just think, well, not head pose, but head expression, words. I don't know how to words with my mouth, but um, I think his eyebrow paint looks great. The skin tone looks good, the little slight wrinkling in his forehead, like the lightness of his nose, just everything about this, I think, just turned out awesome. Now, I think they did a really good job with his hair as well. You can just see, like, the way it's kind of sculpted in the back here, like all the little sculpted grooves that go into this. I just find this kind of thing really impressive, because that's just really good sculpting work, in my opinion. One of the great things about the Marty figure is he comes with a butt-ton of accessories, including this backpack, which actually has like a functioning zipper on it, but you know, it's got like a little cotton in there. Uh, also he comes with a skateboard, and it's totally screen accurate to how it looks in the film with that design, and uh, you yeah, know, the wheels have like a little bit of dirt on them, so that's awesome that they're not perfectly clean wheels. Uh, he also comes with this little camera which has a lot of good little details on it as far as like the dials on the side and like the different colors, the different use of red, the little buttons. I think the video camera turned out awesome looking. He also comes with a little bag of wrist pegs and little buttons for his like vest and jacket because if you've seen those little buttons on other figures, 
uh, like Star Lord, for example, these little buttons tend to pop off. They popped off my Winter Soldier and Star Lord, I can tell you that. He also comes with a little pair of sunglasses, which uh, instructions say are meant to be worn on top of his head and not on his face. But that's cool, you can recreate the classic, you know, poster image. Uh, he comes with several sets of hands. He comes with this open palm right hand, this uh, sort of like sideways grip right hand. Then he comes with a pair of very specific hands. He comes with these hands, which are meant for gripping the skateboard. And he comes with these grip hands, very kind of precise fingers that are meant for holding the uh, Save the Clock Tower sheet. Speaking of which, comes with this little Save the Clock Tower flyer. I think I just called it a speech a second ago, but you know, the flyer for the clock tower. You know what I meant. I'm having problems with words today. Uh, he also comes with his little tiny watch. It is very, very small, um, but it looks great. I think they did a great job with those little tiny buttons on it. He also comes with uh, his little Walkman, which, uh, you know, if you ever had a little cassette player in the 80s, the use of like silver and gray and black, it's a really good looking little Walkman with the little buttons and everything. The uh, headphones look good. He also comes with his guitar. This is the Sideshow exclusive accessory. And what really blows my mind about this, it's got strings on it. I thought it either wouldn't have strings or maybe they'd be painted, but there are actual strings on this guitar. That blows my mind. Uh, and it's a good looking guitar. It also comes with a little strap that you can attach to it. And lastly, he comes with a figure stand, which has his name on it and the Back to the Future logo. Now I'm gonna put on his accessories and switch up some of his poses. First up, the classic one, the poster. His skateboard fits into his hand perfectly. Also, his cassette player fits really snugly into his jacket pocket, and his headphones fit on his head perfectly as well. Like, I had no problem putting them on. And his backpack, like, slings over his shoulder and, like, stays on really, really well. Great Scott, the Sideshow exclusive guitar accessory is really flippin' cool looking. So yeah, in the end, I gotta say, I really like this figure. I think Hot Toys did a great job with this head sculpt. I think the likeness of Michael J. Fox is fantastic. And they did a really good job, you know, tailoring his costume. I think it looks great, and it comes with a lot of accessories. Like, you're really getting a good bang for your buck with all the stuff this figure comes with. As someone who really loves Back to the Future, I love, love, love this figure. I think it turned out great. Thanks for watching.